guys, welcome! In this video, we'll dive into the Chain Lightning build for Warlocks. The Chain Lightning build is the most popular farming build for Warlocks in Episode 5. Chain Lightning deals wind damage not only to a single target, but to enemies near the target as well, making it a really efficient farming skill. In this guide, we'll discuss how to distribute stat points, which Warlock skills and runes to prioritize, what equipment and cards that you use, and all the useful tips to boost your Warlock's Chain Lightning damage. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll get a clearer idea on how to farm using Chain Lightning effectively. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's take a look at the stat distribution. The most important stat to max first is Intelligence since it increases magic attack which is necessary for a higher damage output. Then, allot the remaining points on Dexterity to decrease the variable cast time. Next, let's talk about the skill point allocation. In general, the skills from Mage to High Wizard class are the same with those I've suggested in my previous High Wizard video. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll have the video linked down below. However, just to highlight, make sure you have the following skills. Level 10 Increase Spiritual Recovery and Level 10 Soul Drain both for SP Region. Level 10 Energy Code for Damage Reduction, Magic Damage, and Ignore MDef. And Level 10 Amplify Magic Power to Boost Damage. It is optional to max this to level 20 for the bonus elemental damage. However, note that this will also increase SP cost, so for farming purposes, level 10 is recommended. As for the third job skill points of the Warlock, prioritize getting the following. Level 10 Chain Lighting, which will be our main farming skill. Level 5 Elemental Enhancement, which is a passive skill that would gain an orb when elemental skills are used. This orb would then increase the damage of the corresponding element. Level 10 Recognize Spell for Increase and Pen. And lastly, get level 5 fast reading spell to reduce fixed cast time. Now let's go to runes. We'd only need a few core runes, namely 5 chain lightning jump runes to increase the damage dealt by each bounce of chain lightning, 5 wind damage runes to increase our wind attack, and 3 int runes for additional damage. Aside from those, here are other runes that may help with SP sustain. 2 Amplify Magic Power Delay Runes which would increase the Amplify Magic Power duration by 15 seconds each, thus this will decrease our recast frequency. And 5 Recognize Spell Mastery Runes which would decrease the Recognize Spell SP cost. Lastly, it is optional to get the 5 Chain Lightning Concussion Runes which would give a chance to stun the targets hit by Chain Lightning. This would be useful to stall the mobs from attacking us if we are not able to one-hit them. But then again, our goal is to one-hit the mob, so this rune is just optional. As for the remaining contribution points, just allocate them on nearby magic attack nodes. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. In general, some of the equipment and cards will be the usual recommendations from the High Wizard set as shown in this photo. At this point, most of you will already be familiar with the basic equipment and cards needed. Note that your racial cards would depend on the mobs you choose to farm. However, with this build, we want to swap out a few of our cast time items for those that increase magic attack, ignore MDef, and wind damage to be able to one-hit mobs. Namely, for our offhand instead of the Orleans server, we need a sacrifice book for ignore MDef. It is ideal to aim for a tier 8 plus 10 sacrifice book for a bonus magic attack. For the shoes, the crystal pumps is ideal because of its side effect with the wizardry staff, rove of cast, and eye of the lahan. For the face, the Epic Spirit Lightning from the Nibelungen Shards is recommended for the bonus wind damage. In addition, every refine would further increase wind damage. For the mouth, instead of the Angry Snarl, we can opt for those that increase damage or ignore MDef, such as the Night Sakura Infestoration from the Headwear Gacha. For the back, the Golden Archer from the Feast Gacha will give plus 5% wind damage and less 5% skill cost. Other options are the Bright Light, Lost Star Track, or Devil Wing. For the garment, choose those that have the arcane enchantment for increased magic damage. And lastly, for the headgear and tail, any of these damage-modifying equipment would be suitable. Next, here are some tips you need to take note of when using Chain Lightning. Tip number 1. For your auto skill slots, just put in Chain Lightning and your self buffs, namely Amplify Magic Power, Energy Coat, and Recognize Spell. However, using all three self buffs can consume a lot of SP. Thus, if you have enough magic power against the mobs you're farming, you may adjust and remove some of these buffs. Tip number 2. Before you start the battle, you may use the following consumable items. Original Will Juice for magic attack and M-Pen, and Int Mill A for additional magic damage. 
For SB Discharge, don't forget to consume hot meals and stacks of one-star food for SB Discharge. In addition, Sohi, Marionette, and the Pen Pen Pets have SB Regen skills. However, if you'd like additional damage, the Harpy gives plus 40 magic attack and plus 3% wind damage. Tip number 3, here are some of the usual spots for chain lighting farming. Toy Factory, first floor. You may target any of the mobs here, but ideally the cruisers will give the relatively best loot. Next, we have the Magma Dungeon, first floor. This spot at the 7 o'clock position is ideal as it has a fast respawn and also summons star mobs which can drop lava gems. The only problem is that this is a highly coveted spot so you have to be extra patient when swapping channels. Just have an alt near the teleport NPC so you may easily jump channels. Lastly, we have the Misty Forest or Skellington. If you have enough firepower, you may head out to target the gibbets at the Misty Forest or Skellington. The respawn isn't as close together as the previous two spots. In fact, only two or three mobs at best would be targeted. But this is a good alternative to magma dungeon farming as this is a less crowded spot. The only thing is that the gibbets have higher HP so you may have to use all your self buffs and food to one hit. For a guild blessing, focus on maxing out wise blessings to 150. While for guild praying cards, prioritize the following. For attacks, max out M pen, ignore M def, and magic attack. For death, max out damage reduction, magic damage reduction, neutral damage reduction, and HP. And for element, max out wind damage. And for my final tip, you need to invest in your raw magic attack which I have talked in my previous videos. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll have the video link down below. Alright, so far we discussed the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips for the chain lightning build. I hope this guide was helpful in maximizing our farming efficiency with chain lightning. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.